Welcome to our lecture online and now we're going to take a look at what we call the binomial distribution but the more general case. In the previous video we gave you the basic understanding what a binomial distribution was and we did a simple example by tossing a coin five times and then seeing the binomial distribution for success which in this case was tossing heads when you toss a coin five times. So we can actually use what we call the general equation and this is for the general case. So here we can say that the probability of m successes, m would be a number less than the number of trials, or could be equal to the number of trials really, would be equal to the combination n m times the probability of m successes times the probability of failure of n minus m, n being the total number of trials, and m of course is the number of successes. 1 minus p of course is the number of failures. So to understand what this equation really means, we can rewrite it. We can say that p sub m is equal to n factorial divided by m factorial times n minus m factorial, that's the meaning of this symbol right there, times the probability of success to the m power, m is the number of successes, times the number of failures, the probability of failure I should say, times n minus m power. All right, so now that we have that, let's go ahead and do our example again. In the previous example, we tossed the coin five times. And we said that success was equal to tossing heads. And of course the probability of success was equal to 0 0.5 because there's a 50-50 chance that you get heads when you toss a coin. And then the probability of failure, Q, is equal to 0 0.5 because there's a 50-50 chance that you'll toss a tail instead of heads. And when we looked at the distribution, the binomial distribution, you could have zero heads, so no successes at all. We could have one head, two heads, three heads, four heads, and five heads. And the distribution showed that there was one out of 32 chances to get zero heads. There was five out of 32 chances to get one head, and there was 10 out of 32 chances to get two heads, and there was then 10 to get three heads, five to get four heads, and then one to get five heads. So that was our binomial distribution for tossing a coin five times, the success being heads, the probability of course being 0.5. Again, notice that if we add the areas up or the heights up of each one of those, that should add up to one, the whole thing. All right, now can we get the same result with this equation? The answer is yes, we should be able to. Here we can see that P is 0.5, Q is 0.5. Uh, in this case, M would be two times heads, so we're looking for m equals 2, and then n is equal to 5 because we did the total of 5 trials. Okay, let's plug all those numbers in and see what we get. So the probability to get uh, two successes is equal to n factorial, which is 5 factorial, divided by 2 factorial times 5 minus 2 factorial, times the probability 0 0.5 power raised to the second power and then 0 0.5 power raised to the 5 minus 2. That would be third power. All right, simplifying this a little bit, this would be equal to 5 factorial divided by 2 factorial times 3 factorial times 0 0.5 to the second power and 0 0.5 like this and to the third power. Of course, we could simplify that a little bit more because 0.5 to the second power times 0.5 to the third power would be 0.5 to the fifth power. And so this would be equal to, uh, that would be 5 factorial divided by 3 factorial becomes 5 times 4 divided by 2 factorial, which is 2, times 0 0.5 to the fifth power. Then here, of course, this cancels down to 1 and this is 2, so we get 10 times 0 0.5 to the fifth power. And now we need a calculator. So 0.5 raised to the fifth power, and then we multiply times 10, and we end up with, this is equal to 0 0.3125. Now if we put that into a fraction form, you can find that by getting the inverse button, and that would be, um, uh, that's equal to 10 divided by 32, and which is the same answer that we got over here, when we looked for two successes when we flip a coin five times. 
So you can see that the, um, the result is the same either way. You can go ahead and do this by hand, slowly by doing a binomial expansion, or you can simply take the general case, the general equation for any situation, no matter what the probabilities are for success and failure, no matter what the number of trials are and the number of successes you're looking for, this general equation can solve any, any problem like that. Of course, you can see then that when the numbers get to be really good, let's say n becomes 100 or 1,000, you can see that this becomes a very difficult task. Don't worry, we have another way in which we can approximate these results for binomial expansions when the numbers get to be too big. But let's first get familiar with the general equation with small numbers, and then we'll start looking at the approximations when the numbers get really big in some future videos. And that's how we do that.